What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome back to One Smoker's Palette. It is that time to light up another San Andreas and continue the journey in One Smoker's Palette. Once again, this is a personal journey of mine uh, and this is a very subjective opinion on trying to find the best San Andreas wrapped cigar of 2022. Today I have a very special cigar for everyone to take a look at and it is done by a company that I have the utmost respect for and really, really enjoy their portfolio across the board. I'm speaking none other than the Crook of the Crown San Andreas Robusto. This is a fantastic cigar. We actually featured this one for the OGT Cigar Society, which is our membership here at the shop uh, and online. We featured this almost half a year ago, overwhelming review, but now it's time to put it in line and to the test against the previous cigars that have come before. What does this have to compete with? Currently, the Neanderthal by Romacraft in the size HN is the top leading score at an 80. And right next to it, of course, is the Crow by Blackbird Cigar Company. Let's see if this Crook of the Crown Robusto San Andreas can keep up. The complete composition of this cigar is a San Andreas wrapper, an Indonesian binder, and Nicaraguan fillers. Semi-closed foot on the bottom here, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of a, uh, a light up immediately straight through, and then I'm gonna continue, and then we'll fix up the burn and see where it lands us. Get a little bit of that wrapper spice, beautiful. Okay, so right off the bat, Mexican hot chocolate, pepper on the retrohale. There's almost a floral note to it, just like really, really discreet inside, but definitely a Mexican chocolate. Now, I think it'd probably be important to note that when dealing with San Andreas Maduro, a lot of the indicative flavors of San Andreas has like chocolate properties. But I think that there's a lot of different types that you can go. For me, where my mind goes, there, there's milk chocolate, there's dark chocolate, there's bitter chocolate. 80% dark dark where that there's hardly any sweetness to it or there's Mexican hot chocolate where there's a little bit of spice There's a lot of sweetness and it edges closer to me for that milk chocolate aspect But it's very distinctive and different. So right now that's exactly what I'm getting with a little bit of that floral note Something I appreciate about stolen throne cigars is that their blends and especially when smoking the uh, the Robusto size, such like this, this is a five by 50, the flavor is right away. You have that semi-closed foot, so when you light that up, you can go straight to lighting it if you wanna have more taste on the wrapper side, and then from there, you fix it up, and you give it a proper toasting, and then you get the full blend. Off to a great start right now. I'm gonna to continue to smoke it. Let me try a second puff for second impressions. Good amount of smoke coming off this. It's definitely a smokestack. Definitely still have that like almost perfumey floral aspect. Pepper right now is pretty like uh, sedated, only if you retrohale it. So strength wise, like immediately lighting it up. I'm gonna say it's medium plus right now, but I wanna see if that continues. Uh, so that is the beginning of the Crook of the Crown Robusto by Stolen Throne Cigars. We'll see as we continue on. All right, here we are, second third of Crook of the Crown by Stolen Throne Cigars, Robusto 5x50. That cocoa element remains, but I'm really surprised of how much of like that spice is also still there. A lot of times, especially with San Andreas, when you light it up, there's a little bit of strength up front, there's a little bit of a punch, and then it really mellows, and you see more sweeter notes than there are spicier notes. But that spice and sweet is staying really consistent. I would say equal planes. Along with that perfumey note and that floral element, there's a little bit of nuttiness, like really like toasted, toasted nuttiness, um, and also coffee on the back end. Right now, strength level still in that medium plus range. Uh, the ash did fall off, unfortunately, but I had to set it down, so there is that portion. And I've had to correct the uh, burn once, so we'll see if that continues. Um, but still bringing and amping up a lot of flavor, and I would say Sometimes when you're dealing with a consistency, you have only a one note. So you get a lot of like one note type, well, I'm only getting chocolate or I'm only getting earth. Well, there's a complexity of flavors right now, but it's still consistent all the way through, which I'm really enjoying. So I'm gonna take a second puff, second impressions. I would say if there's anything added to that, 
there's like a very like uh, like sawdusty type of oakiness that's really on the beginning when you first draw it in. Then you go to that sweeter note halfway through. Lingering has that pepper. So hitting a lot of different points of the palette, really enjoying the experience as the actual smoke output and draw. And that's where we are right now. I'm gonna continue to smoke it and we will see in the final third. Okay, here we are, final third, and the sweetness has completely come to life. That chocolate element is just, it's like turning it into like a candy bar. You still have the retro, so it's like, I, I would imagine like something like sweet, like a candy bar, with a little bit of like cayenne pepper on top, um, because I won't necessarily say it's like black pepper. In, in the midway, it was edging towards like a peppercorn, but now it's like a chili powder spiciness to it. Um, still that like toasty element, but a lot of those flavors are up front. And, I'm, and I think that the strength is ramping up a little bit. I would still end this cigar at a medium plus. It's not gonna be too overwhelming, but the, the body is definitely full, the flavor is full, but the strength level is still very palatable, which I really, really appreciate. One thing I also really enjoy about the cigar is the texture and the tobacco itself. And I've said this before on certain videos, especially uh, I've said it before on lives with uh, Lee Marsh of Stolen Throne, is that their label presentation really helps, really lets the tobacco speak visually, smoking experience. The label is, I wouldn't necessarily say simplistic, but it's not too involved. It's not too busy. It's very straightforward and it really makes the tobacco itself pop. Taking all these things in consideration, really having, the, I would say the highlight for me right now is this final third. It just, it went from having such amazing flavors to like insanely good flavors. Um, so adding all this up and putting it through our OGT society scoring scheme, we came up with an 81. That means Crook of the Crown by one point is in the lead right now for a San Andreas Maduro here in 2022. I'm excited to continue on this journey. I'm excited to put other cigars up against the Crook of the Crown, beat Neanderthal by just a little bit, but it's one of those cigars I don't wanna put down. I wanna continue smoking. I wanna keep going back to it and hopefully not smoking it too quickly. So very surprised and excited to see that score come out, but also it is a pleasure to smoke this cigar if you get the opportunity, I would definitely recommend trying this one in particular. As always, I uh, thank you for joining me here on One Smoker's Palette, and of course, supporting the channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that helps. We will see you next time on Oakland Tobacconist.